anatomical snuff box. It is a small triangular depression located on the dorsal radial aspect of the wrist. People used this space for placing and then sniffing the powder tobacco, the snuff. This is how the snuff box got its name. It is triangular in shape. The base is proximal. The apex is pointing towards the thumb. It is seen better when the thumb is extended. Or you can place your palm flat on the table, then lift your thumb off, you will see that anatomical snuff box clearly. The anatomical snuff box is bounded by three tendons. Laterally, you can see the tendon of the abductor pollicis longus, and that is inserted to the base of the first metacarpal. This muscle originates from the radius and the ulna. The second tendon is the extensor pollicis previs, which is inserted to the base of the proximal pharynx. This muscle originates from the radius. Previs probably indicates it's a short muscle, so it comes from the radius. These two tendons makes the lateral border of the snuff box. On the other hand, the extensor pollicis longus tendon makes the ulnar border. This tendon is inserted into the base of the distal pharynx, and as its name indicates, it's longus, so it has to be longer. So it comes from the ulna, and it makes the ulnar side of the anatomical snuff box. The abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis previs tendons are present in the first dorsal extensor compartment. The extensor pollicis longus is present in the third dorsal extensor compartment. All three muscles are supplied by the posterior interosseous nerve, which is a branch of the radian nerve. What are the contents? The radial artery, which forms the deep palmar arch, the superficial radial nerve, and the cephalic vein. The floor of the snuff box is formed by the scaphoid bone and the trapezium. These bones are crossed by the radial artery. Several conditions are related to the anatomical snuff box. The first condition is scaphoid fracture. It's a common carpal bone injury. The key sign for it is tenderness in the anatomical snuff box. You will consider a fracture and treat it as a fracture even if you don't see a fracture in the x-ray. So mobilize the rest in a thumb spiker and see the patient in 10 days to two weeks for re-evaluation and x-rays. Start the immobilization early because the non-union rate will increase if there is a delay in diagnosis for more than four weeks. So you got to diagnose it early and immobilize the rest. The other condition is attrition rupture of the extensor pollicis longus, especially in non-displaced fracture of the distal radius. The patient will be unable to lift the thumb up when the palm is down on a flat surface. The treatment usually is a tendon transfer 
and we used extensor indices for that. Another area of interest is when you inject the Ducker vein syndrome, you will try to locate and see the anatomical snuff box. The tendons of the radial boundary of the anatomical snuff box are the tendons involved in Ducker vein syndrome. Locate these two tendons and inject them. You will find them on the radial aspect of the snuff box. On the other aspect of the snuff box, you will find the extensor pollicis longus tendon. Don't inject that. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.